Say the line. Sound. Pages beige walk. Yay! Holy sh! <laughs> how could I not notice for three entire parts that this word is pronounced differently? At least we have a new meme now. It's been quite a while, huh? I'm bad at naming things brief review of completionist boosted the amount of people trying to get this badge, and my series has got some traction too. Even Manny himself decided to return to the community, he fixed every game and added some new stuff. Let me clarify things from the last parts. First, I already have true completionists. I showed a clip of getting it in part 3, but it was so short that a lot of people missed it. Second, you do not need every badge in every game in order to get completionist. For the multi-badge givers, the test now checks for the first badge out of a whole bunch, so if you didn't get all of them in a game, you should be fine. Third, new games got added, some old games got updated and the difficulty was changed. Let's review them. Manas Game Hub I missed one badge I didn't feature in the last part. The water drop is located under the badge walk behind this pillar. It has no hint in the description, so it's easy to skip. 10 new badges got added. One's a welcome badge. Five of them are located on the stairs that lead to the main badge walk. One's given for touching the lava at the end of the first completionist badge walk. And get two badges by fighting the mighty girl. Gur is a character based on a patchwork creator called Spau Gur, now known as Voidly Antol. In Manus Patchwork, he was replaced with another character, the Mad Scientist, but Gur still makes an appearance in a couple of other games. Yep, a patchwork has literal lore, and I may do a video on it someday. The fight is a nobby located inside another place called Green Cyber. There are two types of obstacles, Green Neon, which kills you instantly, and Blue Neon, which girls you and kicks out of the game. You need to touch it once for a badge, but you still have to avoid it at all costs. The obby itself is not hard, it's rather time consuming to rejoin the game each time you get good. However, the math equation part can be quite difficult for casual players, so I'll explain it. The green and blue blocks puzzle is trivial, just count their amounts and put the values into the equation. The answer is 9. The first equation in this set of 3 is kind of tricky. The left part becomes 0, so we can remove a x. The right part can be transformed into this simple equation, and the answer becomes 1.25. You have to type a number with a dot, commas don't work. For the second equation, treat the parentheses as multiplication, so it becomes 8 to the power of 4. Answer is 4096. For the third equation, you have to find the 20th degree root of 1000. We need the answer up to 3 digits, but because the 4th digit is 5, we round it up to 1.413. The rest of the OB is rather simple. While I was writing the scripts for this video, Green Cyber got updated again and got a secret ending. It gives a pure emerald badge, which is required for the new Archer Completionist badge, and that will be a topic for another video. Not so free badges. This game received a buff, but in a rather bad way. Your character is much slower, the block you have to land on is shifted two starts to the right, and it has been made much thinner. Click to move can help a bit with finding the block's position, but yeah, good luck with that. Nonsense. The button locations in this game were hidden in another spot, but they should be in the same general area. Since Manus Guide got outdated, watch this one by TDS Fan instead. Diamonds Obby The game that I showed in the previous parts was actually a nerfed version of the Obby. Now that it has been updated, the buffs from the first version have been reverted, and the game feels more challenging. And I was too lazy to explain the badges, so let me do it now. After reaching stage 22, there are three ways where you can go for badges. For the sparkly diamond, go forwards and complete the maze. You will be teleported to a light switch puzzle, where you have to make everything blue colored. When I was completing it, somebody had already done the puzzle, so that's a free badge for me. For the orange diamond, go forward past the maze, there will be an orange teleporter in the corner. You have to do a really simple orbit to get a badge. Keep in mind that transparent blocks are also collidable. For the red diamond, turn left and walk on the transparent block. You will be teleported to a terrain world, where you have to find 4 buttons. I will show the locations quickly.
After getting all of them, go into this cave and get the diamond. You will have to reset to get to the other diamonds. For the green diamonds, go back to the other slope and complete the bonus stages. I recommend hold the space because there are lots of insta-kills and the stages are harder than the main ones. Is of Obby. Again, this Obby received a buff too. The insta-kills in the first part have been made a bit larger and the transitions last a bit longer. You can skip the Obby completely by doing 5 11 star jumps and touching a transparent badge giver onto the platform. But why would you even use this when the Obby is already easy? Survive in the world of zombies. A new badge has been added into this game for some reason. Go to the end of the road, take the conveyor belts and the badge will be at the end. Be careful of the zombies though, they damage you. Manus Badge Walk The Gotham Wheel Challenge in Containment Area has been buffed, along with the challenges that are required before that. Most parts of the buffs are related to the math questions. It's recommended to do the Gotham Wheel when you have collected most parts of the rulers, as it requires you to equip some of them. This white brick has been made much smaller, it's transparent and raised up a bit. You can find it by looking through the blocks in first person modes. The math question has also been made much harder, but it requires only the first 12 digits, so the answer is this number. For the confused organization challenge, it's a troll obby. First, go to this teleport inside the pillar, navigate through the invisible maze inside of a red block, do a wrap, Hug the wall and go through the block again. Jump to this block and hug it, and the rest is straightforward. It has not been changed in the recent updates, but people have been asking me for a guide. If you are still having troubles with the challenge, I recommend watching this video by TDS Fan. Now, on to the new games. Badges and Numbers 2 the newest addition to the Completionist series, and it's a sequel to an already good idle game. Instead of having positive and negative numbers, we have a constantly increasing number. The incremental mechanic is similar to a mobile and web game called Antimatter Dimensions, where we have a basic generator and generators that make other generators that make basic generators. Yep, I said that. Besides them, you also have multiple tiers of resets that give extra bonuses and ranks that also reset your number and rebirth counts but allow you to automate rebirths and generators. You can badges by completing the quests on the information screens which raise your skill level. The last skill level is 24. Besides the numbers, there are also badges for doing obbies and getting onto the roof of a building. For the impossible obby, you give a badge of the 7th jump, which is around here. The entire obby is possible though. If you love anti-meta dimensions and incremental games in general, you will love this too. Compensation as the name says, it's a compensation for game passes. If you bought VIP or all meat badges in Manus Badge Walk, you'll be given double the amount of badges that you would get. Obviously, this won't count for completionist. An OBI made. This is the first game that Manus has ever made, and the badges there have been added recently for free, so they are considered as bonus ones. The Obby is made from a classic template game and lacks in quality. One badge is given for joining the game, and two badges are given for doing two different routes. These do not count for completionists since it's also a bonus game. Global Badge Leaderboard the leaderboard has finally got a new map that's different from old GBL. The milestone badges have been extended to 2 million and new activities have been added. There are some obbies that you can do in the time, but only the extreme obby is impossible. At the start, there is a 14.5 star long jump, which has been technically verified by skilled players, but doing it in an actual game is literal hell. There is a badge history museum and a clothing store, which also give badges. There are also badges given for buying clothing, which I doubt anyone would go for. The puzzle section contains two types of puzzles, the slider and the light switch. The slider puzzle is quite easy, but takes a lot of time to do, especially with 12x12 one. I did it by solving the rows one by one until I had only two rows left and sold the columns until everything was done. The light switch puzzle is based on the lights out puzzle, where you have blocks that can be switched into black or white and activity a block switches adjacent ones too. The solution to these puzzles is much more complex, I will leave a link in the description for that, but we will also explain it. First, you have to switch blocks so that only the bottom row has black lights. 
After that you have to press certain blocks on the top row and go row by row until the blocks at the bottom are cancelled out. You can even solve it without a guide by tinkering with the top row combinations. Or you can just cheat it with a solver, but there's no challenge with that. The badge hunt has 10 badges hidden in various locations. Most of them are easy to find, but still some of them are challenging. You can watch TTS fans guide if you're having troubles. Besides the badges, there are also green cubes hidden in much harder spots. First one is located inside of this white block. Second is hidden inside this mountain. And I would recommend lowering your graphics to 1 to find the spots, since it's quite hard to get in. The third block is located inside the black building of the second floor. Go straight inside the wall and go a bit further. The fourth one is hidden at the construction site, inside the block on the fourth floor. After you get all the blocks, Ghost Shield is disabled and you get a badge for touching him. Besides that, a path opens at the construction site and it has even more puzzles prepared for you. The 3x3x3x3 slider is not that hard, but the 8x8 light switch can get really mad. After doing all of them, you can rejoin and get another badge. The hidden badges do not have any hints, and they are extremely difficult to find. And again, there's yet another guide by TTS fan that shows all of them. I helped them too, by the way. After completing all the puzzles, the badge hunt, the obis besides the extreme one, and the hidden badges, you can walk up to this spot at the puzzles area and grab a final badge. Badges from GPO are not required for completionists, since some of them are technically paid and some of them are difficult and have not been obtained yet, like the 2 million badge milestone. However, the activities badge will be helpful for ultra completionists, because it's required for a pure emerald badge, along with 250,000 badges milestone. Alright, now I think it's time to finish the series again. Since Mana can update his games anytime now, I can't be bothered to make new videos every time something is changed. If you need help, I recommend visiting the official server for Mana's Badge Walk or communities like Badges of Robloxia and Legendary Badge Collectors. Keep in mind that in order to verify in their Discord servers, you need to join their groups. And please, be polite to people there. I may do some Roblox videos in the future, so if you have any video ideas, let me know. See you next time, I guess.